Good afternoon. Well, thank you for that. Um, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Tim Takechi, and I am the communications manager here at 501 Commons. Um, I am part of the Washington Gives and Give Big team here. And um, anytime you receive uh, an email, a newsletter from us, um, you know, you see stuff on the Washington Gives social media channels, uh, chances are I had a hand in that. Uh, so I am in responsible for uh, writing copy and gathering stories and um, photos and videos and making sure that everything looks pretty and that everything and that we are promoting uh, these campaigns out to the public. And um, that is my role here. And uh, Christina, will you please introduce yourself? And I'm Christina Rohel, and I am the Washington, Washington Gives Program Coordinator. Um, and um, I'm new in this role, so I um, am working closely with Tim. All right, thank you guys. So we are joined uh, throughout today's webinar by the 501 Commons team. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Bethany from Mighty Cause. I'll be doing most of the chatting here today, but we will make some time at the end for questions. So if you have questions that are about the platform and how to use it, please feel free to type those in. If you have questions for 501 Commons team about the Washington Gives platform, um, you can type those in as well, and we will make some time for questions at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Again, this webinar is being recorded. It will be shared after, and you can feel free to type questions into your Zoom control panel as we go throughout the webinar today. So we're here really to talk about the Washington Gives platform and how to make the most of this platform that you have access to on a year-round basis. Many of you might be most familiar with the Washington Gives platform through your participation in Give Big, but Give Big is just one of the reasons that you should be using the Washington Gives platform. It might be the biggest reason, but it is only one, and there's lots of reasons that you can use it, and you can use it all year round. So we're going to go through what features you have available, uh, and then spend a lot of time focusing on Giving Tuesday in particular. That is the next upcoming uh, major campaign happening on the Washington Gives platform. So we'll go over some tips and campaign strategy ideas that tie back to tools you might have access to in the platform. And if you're relatively new, the Washington Gives tran uh, platform transitioned to partner with Mighty Cause uh, earlier this year. And so some features you may not be aware of that exist on the platform, some of the functionality might be new. So appreciate everybody taking the time to join us today to get familiar with some of the tools that you have access to, not just for your Give Big campaign, but all year round. So a couple of just brief points of information to make sure that everyone's on the same page about what Washington Gives is and what it's all about. As I mentioned, it's hosted by 501 Commons, and the technology platform is powered by Mighty Cause. There's two major annual campaigns that happen each year, Give Big, of course, which happened in May, and then Giving Tuesday, which we have coming up later this month, because it's already November, and I can't believe that. So <laughs> coming up later this month, Giving Tuesday. Um, aside from these two major events, Washington Gives is here to be a year-round resource for nonprofits. So you can use this platform on a year-round basis to raise funds. You can participate in those two major campaigns, but you can also host your own campaigns at any time during the year. You can put a donation widget or an embeddable donation form on your website. You can host a peer-to-peer -peer campaign in August if you want. You can do a walkathon campaign in October whatever works for your nonprofit. Um, the main goal of today is to make sure that all organizations that have access to this platform are aware of all the resources that you have access to within this platform. So there is a full suite of fundraising tools that come included. As I just mentioned, a donation form or widget for your website, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools, the ability to do real-time matching grants. We have lots of great integrations that are available if you're using third-party tools like Salesforce for your CRM or MailChimp for your email marketing. 
there are integrations built into the platform that you can take advantage of so that you can streamline your fundraising efforts. We have volunteer management tools and many more. So behind all of those great powerful fundraising tools is really secure donation processing. So that is what the platform is built to do for you on a year round basis, process donations and send them to your nonprofit. Uh, different than uh, previous years with the transition to partner with Mighty Cause, funds are dispersed twice a month to nonprofits that are signed up for direct deposit. If you opt not to sign up for direct deposit, you'll still receive your funds on a once monthly basis. But for those that uh, sign up for direct deposit, you'll receive that twice a month. So you are getting your funds very quickly, <clears throat> securely, and easily. So again, just a little bit of uh, general expectation setting about what Washington Gives is all about and how you can take advantage of it. So on a year-round basis, there are a whole host of features that are included for free as a part of your access to this platform. You can accept one-time donations or you can accept recurring donations. So maybe your organization hasn't done a lot with recurring giving in the past, um, or maybe you have and you're looking to streamline your fundraising into a single platform, you have recurring donation capability within the Mighty Cause tools uh, on Washington Gives. We'll talk more about it a little bit later, but it's a really user-friendly experience, both for you as the nonprofit managing a recurring donation campaign, as well as for the donors who are setting up or editing or wanting to make changes to their recurring gift. You can put a donation widget similar to that kind of view you're seeing here in this screenshot right on your website. So if you're using PayPal or Square or some other kind of tool on your website to accept donations, you can replace that with a donation widget. That donation widget uh, will give you more opportunity for a branded uh, giving experience. You can keep donors on your website. If you have a PayPal button, when they click on the PayPal button, they get taken to a PayPal experience. Uh, when you embed a donation widget, they stay within your website and click through these screens that you're seeing here to complete their gift, all while staying within your organization's site. They also have the ability to cover fees that are associated with a donation. Um, so definitely encourage you to consider embedding a donation widget on your website. All those that that uh, the reports of that donor info are going to flow right into the Washington Gives platform in your dashboard like you're familiar with. The funds will be dispersed to you on a bi-monthly basis. You get to take advantage of all the other great things that are built into the donation processing with uh, the Washington Gives platform and just have it on your website. If you don't have uh, another tool, um, you know, if you don't have PayPal Square or something else, uh, and you don't have a way within your organization's website to accept donations, then this is a no-brainer. And we definitely encourage you to access your donation widget in your dashboard and embed it onto your website. We have tools. Part of the reason that we encourage the, you know, either using the Washington Gives platform or a widget is we have checkout customization tools. You can set up suggested donation levels. So, you know, what does $50 do for your nonprofit? You can set a custom thank you receipt uh, and a thank you page, what donors see after they complete their gift. So you have the ability start to finish to really customize the checkout experience, make a donor feel like they're giving to your organization directly, not like they're giving through PayPal, for example. You can host fundraising campaigns, <clears throat> whether it's for your organization, if you have a very focused effort, you need to raise $10,000 to purchase a new van, or you need to raise $20,000 to launch a new initiative, whatever it might be, you can host a dedicated fundraising campaign. You can add matching grants to any fundraising campaign you have on the platform. So that's real time matching grants that can add extra urgency excitement to your page. You have really great comprehensive reporting and analytics tools to understand what you're seeing with your fundraising. Volunteer management tools, you can post volunteer opportunities to allow supporters to sign up for these opportunities with your organization. And finally, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. 
there is a very powerful set of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools that you have access to, whether it's an individual coming to your page, creating a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for their birthday or their wedding or for Giving Tuesday. Um, but we also have group peer-to-peer -peer fundraising options. So you can create a team fundraising page and, for example, get all of your board members to create an individual campaign and a team page sort of brings their fundraising together. So lots of really great opportunities. All of these are included in the Washington Gives platform and you have access to them today. There is also a set of advanced features that is available should you be interested in looking to do more. We, uh, the across the state of Washington, there are nonprofits of all shapes and sizes, uh, some with really great powerful fundraising tools, some without a ton of powerful fundraising tools, some using 10 different tools, kind of hodgepodging them all together. Um, and so what we want to do is make sure that you're aware of these features that are available, should they make sense for your nonprofit. All those things that I just mentioned previously are included, and that's the core of what you really need to be successful to host a campaign for Give Big or Giving Tuesday. But you also have additional options to do more, to amplify. So there is a built-in CRM to the Mighty Cause and Washington Gives platform that we call our supporters CRM. It's a streamlined CRM system. It's not gonna be quite as robust uh, as a very comprehensive high-end CRM, but for organizations that either don't have a CRM, are using spreadsheets, uh, Excel, et cetera, it's gonna be a great tool to venture deeper into the world of CRM, or perhaps you have a really comprehensive CRM, but you just find that you're not using all of the tools in it, and it's bogging down your team in that you have to have a database person who spends most of their time maintaining that system. That's not, that wouldn't be necessary with your supporter CRM. So you can track your supporters by their history, their history in giving, their history in fundraising, key details about these supporters. You can message and do uh, digital marketing through the platform. So great option uh, if you are looking for a new CRM or you're looking to invest in a CRM because you haven't had one in the past. Talked a little bit about our donation widget earlier. That is included for free, um, but we have an embeddable donation form which is a more robust, comprehensive experience. You can customize the look and feel a little bit more, and it's a full donation form that you can embed into your website. So if you're looking to step up uh, the donation widget experience and have a little bit more customization, you can do that with the embeddable donation form. We have text to give functionality, so you can create text keywords for specific campaigns that you might be running. Supporters can text that keyword to a specific number and they are texted a link to your donation page where they can very easily complete their gift online um, on their phone. Uh, we have uh, among the many things that make the donation checkout really seamless and easy, browser autofill and uh, Apple Pay, uh, really quick for donors to complete their gift on their phone. So text to give can be uh, especially useful. And as I mentioned earlier, lots of integrations available in our advanced package. So Salesforce and MailChimp, I already mentioned, Google Analytics, Slack, if your team uses that internally for communications. And we also have an integration with Zapier, which is a database or library of applications. It includes Salesforce and MailChimp, but it also includes over a thousand more a constant contact, campaign monitor, all the Google tools, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. Um, you have endless possibilities for automation and efficiency for your organization with that Zapier integration on its own. So if you choose, if you have any interest in this advanced package, some of those features I was just talking about, you have the option to either uh, upgrade monthly, pay monthly, or you can upgrade uh, and commit for a year. You can do this right through the platform in your settings under plan management. We do have a free trial. So you might want to consider if you are hosting a campaign, a dedicated campaign for Giving Tuesday, doing your free trial 
during that Giving Tuesday campaign and testing out some of the features, seeing how useful they feel, um, making sure that they are adding value to your organization. Um, aside from some of the things I've already mentioned, really the key reasons that we encourage organizations to consider upgrading is to streamline your fundraising efforts. Uh, we know that uh, nonprofits are always strapped for time and resources. And so the less different platforms and systems you're using to manage your fundraising, the more efficient that you can be. And when upgrading to advanced, you have the ability to perhaps remove some third party tools that you might be using. Or if you can't remove them, like MailChimp, for example, adding an integration between the Washington Gives platform and your MailChimp account will streamline your efforts and will cut down manual work of downloading a report and importing it into Mighty Cause or importing it into MailChimp, for example. Um, you can save yourself or your team or your volunteers really valuable time on some of those manual and administrative tasks. Uh, and I talked about it already, um, but really the ability to customize that donation processing experience that happens on your website outside of when you're dedicating traffic and uh, attention to the Washington Gives platform for one of these key campaigns. So again, there is a free trial av available. Um, we invite you to preview it, test it out, especially during Giving Tuesday might be a great opportunity uh, to see if any of those features can really help your organization do more with this platform. So now we're gonna jump into uh, Giving Tuesday campaign ideas. So we're going to walk through a handful of specific campaign ideas, talk about the big picture, and then uh, some of the things that you will want to be aware of in, in setting that up or using that strategy with the platform. Uh, so the first idea to be talking about here is the uh, a focus on recurring giving. So I mentioned earlier Recurring donations are available uh, as a key functionality of this platform. And so whether you have really focused on recurring giving in the past uh, or not, it could be a great idea to consider either moving your recurring activity into this platform so everything's in one place or starting a recurring donation campaign. Giving Tuesday is a great place to do that. So. Um, if you wanna do that, a couple things to keep in mind, um, rather than you know setting a goal of raising $10,000 or raising $5,000, for example, you might wanna set a goal around how many new recurring donors you can get to give during this campaign. You'll likely want to change your messaging to make sure that it's, it's about asking for smaller gifts uh, because you're asking for those gifts to recur each month uh, for the next year, for example. Um, often hear messaging around, you know, for the cost of a cup of coffee or something like that. So make it really tangible for the donor of the small sacrifice they can make on a regular basis. What does that do for your nonprofit? Even though it might be a small sacrifice for them, it has real impact for your nonprofit. Um, also talking about why recurring donor donations are valuable for your organization. Um, I think especially post-COVID, post-pandemic, when a lot of organizations uh, saw really challenging times with their fundraising, sustainability is more important than ever before, and recurring donations are a key component to that sustainability. So make sure that your donors understand that their recurring gift allows your organization to, to commit to the service that you provide to your audience, whoever that audience might be. You can also go so far as creating special tiers of monthly giving levels uh, or specific benefits. They get special new, you know, they get in, included, invited to special events, they get special communications from your board, whatever it might be. Um, make it feel like something special that they want to be a part of. Um, and if you're interested in recurring giving, I encourage you to not just make it an option that's available as a part of your donation page, but really build a campaign encouraging that type of gift. A couple things that you can do for that. 
Um, when you are building your donation page and customizing checkout experience on the platform, you can default donors into making a monthly gift. So when they come to your checkout page, typically by default, they're going to be uh, defaulted into giving a one-time gift. But if you're doing a recurring giving campaign, you can switch that default so that when they come to the page, they're being suggested to make a monthly gift for your nonprofit. Um, donors can easily manage and edit their recurring donations on the platform. So if they make a recurring gift as a part of your Giving Tuesday campaign, and then they decide in January, oh, I really want to change the date that this process is each month, or I want to change the amount, or maybe I need to cancel it. Um, all of that they can very easily do in the platform. Uh, they can change, you know, they can update the expiration date on their card. They can increase the gift. They can change the card. Uh, really easy management tools so that they can um, edit their gift. And you, as a nonprofit, have great tools to be able to track their giving as well. You have a recurring donations report in your dashboard so you can see the donors that have recurring gifts. When did it start? When is their next uh, gift set to process? You will receive an alert if, say, their upcoming gift for December 15th is going to fail because their credit card is going to expire before that time. You will receive an alert so that you can follow up with them. That donor will also receive an automated reminder from the platform encouraging them to update their uh, card in the system so that their gift processes. So the goal is built-in tools that will help keep your recurring donors active and then reporting available to you within the platform so that if donors lapse, you have what you need to follow up with those donors really to make use of this uh, incredibly special group of supporters for your organization. <clears throat> so the next type of campaign idea that we encourage you to consider and uh, just to a, a brief note, uh, you may choose to do all of these. You may choose to do a couple of these. You can combine them. You could choose just one. Um, it's really more this uh, webinar today is really more to give you inspiration and ideas uh, for what might make the most sense for your nonprofit at this point. But one way to take advantage of Giving Tuesday is by either posting volunteer opportunities on the Washington Gives platform or hosting an event and then posting that event on the platform uh, to be found and discovered by uh, donors and supporters. So uh, obviously this is true of giving and fundraising all year round, uh, but it's about more than, Giving Tuesday in particular, is about more than just giving money. Uh, there is a big campaign around giving back in all kinds of ways, you know, supported by the givingtuesday.org movement. Uh, so maybe for your organization, volunteerism is more of what you're looking for right now than a monetary, you know, $5,000 fundraising campaign, for example. Um, if so, there are great tools in the platform for you to take advantage of for that. Uh, you can plan an open house uh, to e bring supporters in and let them see your work firsthand. Uh, you can invite volunteers in to actually contribute in and support your mission. Of course, this makes sense for certain nonprofits and for other nonprofits with different missions, it may not make sense for you. But if you do have something where you can invite the community in, you know, help prepare uh, food for the food bank or food for distribution or whatever it might be, if there is a way that you can use your mission and bring supporters in to let them see your mission in action, either by participating in it or just seeing it firsthand. That's a great uh, thing to, to do for this uh, campaign. You can host a happy hour, partner with a local restaurant or bar and get them to contribute part of the proceeds uh, and create space for in-person engagement with some of your supporters. Uh, or you can post specific volunteer opportunities and give ways for some of your skilled volunteers uh, and supporters to give back. So maybe you need finance help, you need social media help, need um, a videographer, photographer. Uh, you might be surprised to uh, discover what some of the great resources uh, that your existing network of supporters um, can be for you with things that would help your nonprofit. 
So if any of these seem appealing to your nonprofit and feel like they could add value, uh, you're going to want to go to the fundraising tools section of your dashboard and into the opportunities feature. Uh, through this feature, you have the ability to promote either in-person or online events. Those can be, you know, typical events like the happy hour or open house that I mentioned, or they can be volunteer opportunities. So if you want to, you know, if you're advertising for uh, accounting support for your organization, uh, you can post that as well. Um, there are registration tools built into the platform. So let's say you're hosting, a, you know, a, you, you have a volunteer opportunity and you want volunteers to sign up. They can do that through the platform. They can register there. But if you happen to be already using a third party tool like Eventbrite, for example, to sell tickets to an event that you might be hosting, you can still post this opportunity on the Washington Gives platform and link to the Eventbrite page that you have set up so that the the advantage there you know you might wonder well if i already have this on eventbrite why would i put it on washington gives platform the washington gives uh team at 501 commons is going to be updating the home page and encouraging donors and supporters to come to the platform uh, and discover causes to uh, support for giving tuesday and um, they, they can search for volunteer opportunities, they can search for events, or they can, of course, donate. Uh, so it's just an additional exposure opportunity for your nonprofit and for this event in particular. Uh, you'll also have the ability to manage and message either registrants to an event or volunteers that have signed up. So great uh, options here, uh, especially if you're looking to supplement a more traditional donation campaign. These tools uh, you may have taken advantage of during Give Big. If you haven't, you can do the, do it again next year with Give Big. Um, but great way to add uh, additional um, additional ways of engagement for your supporters. Um, something that I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, but one thing you might want to consider is a very specific uh, project or program focused campaign. So setting a tangible goal, as I mentioned, you need $5,000 to repair the roof on something, or you need to invest in something new, or uh, one of your programs, uh, let's say your organization has lots of different programming and, and your mission is uh, it serves a number of different things. Perhaps you decide let's focus Giving Tuesday only on our after school program or only on our women's program, for example. Uh, some way to give it some focus to make it feel distinct, unique, specific. You can set a tangible goal. Tell the story of this program in particular, this project, this need, um, and the audience that is served by it. Um, there's an example here on the, the platform of the type of page that you can create uh, to, uh, to showcase this specific initiative. You could set a dollar-based goal or a donor-based goal. Maybe you're trying to engage 20 new donors uh, or you know, get 50 donations or raise $10,000, for example. Uh, on this fundraising page, you there's all kinds of great features to take advantage of. Um, one exciting one would be connecting your Instagram feed, especially if it's just for a specific program. Um, might be a nice way to add some extra uh, information to your page, uh, allow donors to, to learn more um, based on the content that you're already sharing on social media. Um, you can customize the donation levels and the thank you message. Talked about this earlier across the platform, but if you're hosting a specific campaign like this, you'll want to make sure that the donation levels and the thank you messaging, uh, both in the receipt and on the thank you page on the platform, tie into this specific focus. So if it is that women's program, keeping that content string, content thread consistent from what they see on in your emails to what they see on the donation page to what they see in the checkout uh, and on that thank you is going to add nice consistency for that donor and really enforce why they're giving to your organization and what the impact of their gift is going to be. Matching grants. 
uh, talked about this a little bit earlier, um, but uh, this is a recommendation for almost any campaign that you might be hosting. Um, consider adding a matching grant, especially at this time of year. Uh, you can look, uh, for example, at past year's end of year giving and see if there might be some major donors that you expect to be making a large gift before the end of the year. Reach out to them and ask if they might be willing to let you repurpose that gift into a match for Giving Tuesday or a match for end of year. Um, many of the, the tools or the ideas that we're talking about here, I'm talking about in the context of Giving Tuesday, can just as easily be used for your end of year fundraising campaign or for both. Um, so asking one of your major donors to repurpose their gift and make it into a match, um, go beyond just the, um, you know, the one-to-one -one standard match. You can do a triple match. You can do all kinds of really uh, fun things in the platform to, to make it exciting. And Giving Tuesday in and of itself will add urgency for donors. Of course, uh, that's the benefit of being a part of a giving day or a campaign like this. But as you know, there will be thousands of nonprofits hosting Giving Tuesday campaigns. Donors will be receiving thousands of emails and seeing it everywhere. So adding a match can be a nice way to help your campaign stand out among the noise, allow the donor to feel like their impact can go further. If they have $100 to give on Giving Tuesday and they get 10 different emails from 10 different nonprofits, but with yours, that $100 becomes $200 of impact or $300 of impact, they might be more likely to choose your organization uh, and follow through with making their gift. So I mentioned this already, but there's a lot of uh, flexibility within the tool on the platform uh, to post your matching grant. So um, just to make sure that everyone's on the same page, we encourage you to secure a matching donor that matching donor can give their gift to your nonprofit in whatever way is helpful. They don't have to pay their match online through the platform. They certainly can if they'd like to. But if they want to write a check to your nonprofit, great. If they want to make it conditional that you only receive that match if you raise the full 5000 or if they want to give it to you either way, that's absolutely between you and your matching donor. And we encourage you to work with that donor to figure out what really meets their needs and or what meets your needs as a nonprofit. But we encourage you to post it on the platform because that will really allow you to make the most of this gift, this match incentive with other donors that you might engage. So by posting it on your page, you can uh, keep it simple. Like I mentioned earlier, just have a one-to-one -one match. So if you raise $5,000, you unlock a $5,000 match. Um, but you can do all kinds of other things if you want to get fancy with it. You can stack multiple matches. So let's say you have three or four different supporters who might be willing to give a match. You can have one match available um, that kicks off Giving Tuesday and by noon, you have ex expired your first match, you've reached your first goal of 5,000, you can unlock a second match that's available through the rest of the day. Uh, or you can look at you know, Giving Tuesday through end of year and maybe you post a match on Giving Tuesday and you add another matching grant to your page later in that last week of the year as ways to add extra excitement and urgency during those two different key times. Um, adding this match will add to your page an icon that says there's a matching grant live. There will be a countdown uh, on your page that shows the donors how much time is left in the match and how much is left in the match itself. Um, and so that, that visual display helps connect donors to the additional impact that they can have. Peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. I talked about this a little bit earlier in terms of uh, team fundraising ideas, um, but if you haven't really done a lot with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, or maybe you didn't have the ability to experiment with it during Give Big this year, Perhaps that's what sets your Giving Tuesday campaign apart. Uh, it's a great way to steward supporters who maybe have been donors for many years or they've been monthly donors, they're committed, you know that they're a supporter for your organization. Inviting them to take this next step and become a fundraiser might be a great way to deepen your relationship with that supporter. Of course, key benefit is it's going to expand your audience. 
of donors that you will have access to on Giving Tuesday. Uh, your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers will be engaging and reaching out to their network of donors and your potential pool of givers becomes much larger. Um, within the platform, you have a couple of tools to make peer-to-peer -peer fundraising really easy and accessible, both for your nonprofit as well as for the individuals doing the fundraising who may be new to this. It's not their full-time job to do fundraising. So um, the tools that we have can make it feel like an easier ask for them to sign on board. Uh, first is there is a fundraiser template that every nonprofit has access to in their dashboard under fundraising tools. So building out this fundraising template pretty much allows your nonprofit to pre-fill content, an image, a description about your organization, set a goal, et cetera. You can pre-fill all the content so that your supporters that want to become a fundraiser just basically have to click a few buttons and then they'll have an active page that's ready to accept gifts. They can certainly choose to customize the page, add a personal story, a personal photo, if they'd like to take that next step, but they don't need to. And they're more quickly gonna get through that onboarding process and have an active page that's ready to accept gift. Because really what you want your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers to focus on is spreading that donation page link and getting their supporters to give. You can also consider uh, creating a team campaign. So, this sort of adds that benefit of a template um, as well as bringing a group of people together. So maybe you have supporters that haven't really tried peer-to-peer -peer fundraising before. Doing it in a group can feel less intimidating than doing it on their own. Giving you that group structure also will allow you to more effectively kind of manage and message and talk to this group of fundraisers through tools on the platform. You can create kind of a friendly competition. Maybe it's a, you know, your board of directors and they each have a page. Maybe it's volunteers, they each have a page. Maybe it's your staff versus your board or your staff versus volunteers, whatever makes sense for your organization and the audience that you have to support you. Um, but creating a team campaign allows you uh, to add some additional fun tools like a leaderboard uh, and that progress bar that's gonna show the, the collective impact of this group of people. And of course, as with all peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, all the funds are gonna flow directly to your nonprofit. They're gonna, the donation uh, donor info is gonna go right into your donations report. You'll receive the funds on a bi-monthly basis through direct deposit. So really encourage you to consider peer-to-peer -peer fundraising if you haven't yet. Um, and then the final kind of campaign I get to talk about here is a give big re-engagement campaign. So uh, the last time we all had the benefit to talk together, we were focused all about give big. Um, you likely participated in give big, had a really successful campaign, hopefully got lots of uh, supporters, both new and existing to give to your organization. When is the last time that you spoke with that group specifically? And followed up with them about their Give Big gift. If nothing else, if you do nothing else for Giving Tuesday, I encourage you to consider this. Plan something special to talk to those Give Big donors. Maybe you want to make an additional donation ask, or maybe you don't. Maybe it's just about closing the loop with them and sharing the impact of the gift that they gave back in May sharing what your organization has been able to do with the funds that you raised in Give Big. Um, again, it's up to you what makes the most sense and how you've been communicating between now and then. But if you haven't done a lot of communication, I absolutely encourage you to consider this as a part of your Giving Tuesday strategy. It's very critical stewardship. Um, you can't say thank you too many times. There is no such thing with your donors. So uh, consider that. Um, and you can always uh, go back into your donations report on the platform and easily filter to see the list of donors that gave to your Give Big campaign this year. A quick download uh, so that you can make best use of that. And again, continue to steward this ever important group of donors to say thank you and lay the early foundation for the 2023 campaign. So as I mentioned already, uh, all of these tips, you know, 
are useful uh, and they can be a part of your campaign, whether it's for Giving Tuesday or end of year fundraising. We're really about to kick off a very important time of year for nonprofit fundraising, as you all know. Um, and so maybe Giving Tuesday is where you wanna focus your efforts. Maybe your nonprofit wants to focus more on your year end campaign. Maybe you're planning to do both and you wanna find a nice way to seamlessly combine the two. Uh, whatever um, whatever makes sense for your organization, I hope some of these tips are uh, helpful to keep in mind. The final tip that I wanted to cover here today, uh, specifically for year-end fundraising, is to implement a donor retention campaign. So uh, this is going to be having a special message, a special targeted effort to reach donors who gave to your organization last year and who haven't yet come back and make a gift this year. If you don't get uh, them to come back and make their gift before the end of the year, uh, you're, you are losing that donor. They're going to transition from you know, an active to a lapsed donor, and it's going to be harder to re-engage them in the future. So you have a month, two months left, uh, if you will, uh, to try and re-engage, retain as many of those givers from 2021 as possible. So consider special messaging that is going to bring them back, get them re-engaged with your organization if they haven't been super engaged uh, yet this year. Um, this strategy is often overlooked, but it's critically important because it costs much less <laughs> and takes much less effort to reactivate uh, a, a donor uh, than to acquire a brand new donor. And of course, every good fundraising strategy is gonna need to have a mix of both, but don't miss out on the opportunity uh, to implement this as a part of your year-end campaign. Something to be aware of, you can, through the Washington Gives platform, access a donor retention report to see what donors gave through the Washington Gives platform last year and who have not yet given this year. So even though the platform transitioned in this last year, your past donation history from the Washington Gives platform was migrated in. So you can compare who gave to your nonprofit through Washington Gives in 2021 versus who has given in 2022. Now, this will not be as effective if you are using many different sources of, um, sources of truth to accept donations, if you will. Uh, so if you have donations coming in from a number of different places, of course, the donor retention report on the platform is only going to show you the data for here. Yet another reason I would encourage you to consider streamlining is the ability to make use of tools like this, which help make your job easier when it comes to retaining donors. Uh, but nevertheless, I encourage you to visit your donor retention report. It's available in your dashboard under reports. You can easily filter to see who is this list of donors that gave last year but haven't yet given this year? You can see key details. When was their last gift? What was their gift amount? You can send a message using the platform to that donor directly, or you can download the full list as a CSV and you know maybe assign it out to different people within your staff or your board, you know, if you want board members to contact those larger unretained donors, or you have a group of volunteers that can do outreach to all the donors, uh, strategy is yours to, uh, to develop, but make use of that donor retention report uh, if it can help you. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and see if we've got any questions that have come in. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to ask questions now uh, or yet, please feel free to type them in. Uh, while I'm looking at uh, to see if there's any questions that have come in, Tim, Christina, feel free to jump in uh, if you have any uh, information um, that you want to share, anything that you want to add. Uh, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer then. Uh, and again, Tim and Christina, feel free to chime in uh, if uh, any time that you'd like. A couple questions on fees as it relates to the widget. Uh, the donation widget, it's going to be the exact same fee structure as using the platform. So whether you send donors to your uh, page on Washington Gives or whether you embed a widget on your website, it's the same fee structure. And just like on the Washington Gives platform, donors have the ability to cover those fees on your behalf. So 
same exp same overall giving experience, same fee experience. It's just that you have the ability to keep your donors on your website. Um, and uh, while they complete their gift. Uh, another question here, what are the charges for reoccurring giving processing without subscribing to the advanced features? Um, so I'm going to attempt to answer how I think what the, I think this question is about. There, there are no uh, extra fees to access recurring giving, for example. That's included as a part of the platform. And the, the fees on recurring gifts are the exact same fees that you would see on a one-time gift. So no additional charges, no different charges for recurring donations. It's just that uh, those will um, be uh, you know, coming to your nonprofit on a monthly basis. Uh, okay, a couple questions there. I see there's some questions in the chat, so I'm going to jump to there next. Uh, yes, okay. Can you import donors into the platform from campaigns outside of the Washington Gives platform? Uh, so yes, this would be a benefit to um, upgrading to the advanced uh, features, especially if you're planning to take advantage of the supporters CRM tool that we have. Uh, if you are upgraded to advanced, there is an import functionality where you can import donor records as well as import donation history. Um, let's see. Uh, last question, how might I use Giving Tuesday on this platform as the kickoff for a year-end direct marketing fundraiser that my organization has already planned? Um, without knowing uh, too many details about what your uh, campaign might be, um, uh, I, I don't know exactly what I would suggest, but uh, I think definitely taking a moment uh, now to think about what are what is the goal of your year-end campaign? Uh, where are you directing people to make their gift? What kind of message are you uh, sending during that direct marketing fundraiser? Uh, and then seeing how you can have uh, Giving Tuesday complement that. So um, if you're going to be talking to the same list of people, but uh, one is direct mail versus email, um, maybe you want to opt for consistency and you use Giving Tuesday to start giving the message to people ahead of time, warming them up so that when they receive uh, the you know direct mail piece, it's you know already something that they're familiar with in their mind. Um, I don't I'm not entirely sure uh, you know what the what the focus of that campaign will be. So I don't know that I have a ton of other great tips for you, unfortunately, but uh, happy to have you reach out uh, to the support uh, team uh, if you want to get some additional, uh, additional tips. And I think that's most of the questions that we have. So unless anybody has any other questions, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end today's webinar. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you joining us today. Good luck with your Giving Tuesday campaign, with your end of year fundraising. I hope you can take advantage of all the great tools that you have access to on the Washington Gives platform. And remember, you have tools in our customer support team as well. Uh, so email Washington or wagives at mightycause.com. Um, we're happy to help you uh, with any questions on getting your campaign set up. Um, and thanks everyone. Have a great day.